I had a great childhood. I didn't suffer any physical abuse or sexual abuse. But even at seven, I was aware that I was attracted to guys. When I was 13, I was looking at this picture of a shirtless guy. I wasn't masturbating, I just came. And that was the first time I realised that I was sexually aroused by guys. And I knew that it was abnormal. I wanted to ask people at church for help, but I was too ashamed. And I didn't want to be a social outcast. I started to date girls thinking that that would help, but it didn't help. I got more and more curious about guys. So I started to buy gay magazines, gay porn videos, and I masturbated over them. But I wanted more pleasure. So in my late 20s, I'd spend my nights at gay bars and gay saunas. We don't even need to know each other's name. A single look, a sensual touch, short exchange, that's all it took to initiate sex. I was like a kid in a candy store. Sometimes one treat a day wasn't enough. I'd find myself indulging in sex with three or four men a day. There was no happiness in it. There was just the desire for sexual pleasure. As the years progressed, I grew more disgusted with myself because I knew that my appetite and indulgences were not healthy for any normal human being. There was this black hole of emptiness that the sex could not fulfill. The more sex I had, the bigger this void grew. After 30 years of this sexual lifestyle, I felt very empty inside. One day in 2014, a friend of mine said that he was going to church and I told him that I was so dirty that I was not qualified to go to church. But this friend told me that I was wrong, that I was righteous before God. And I told him that's nonsense. How could I be righteous before God? Look at all the things that I was doing. And he said, no, his pastor told him that we're righteous before God. So, I thought, what a strange pastor that would tell you and me that we are righteous before God. So I followed him to church. And at church, this pastor was preaching on the parable of the prodigal son. The pastor said, the prodigal son, he was far away and the father saw him from far away. So the father was looking out for the prodigal son. He ran to the prodigal son, not the son running to the father, but the father ran to the son. And the pastor said this, do you realize that the son was still dirty at this time? just returned from feeding swine, and yet the father ran to him, yet the father kissed him, and yet the father put the best robe on him. And this was when I heard God to say to me, son, come home. And from that point on, I started walking with God. And I asked my pastor, is this of God? And I thank God for good pastors like my pastor who told me the truth of God from the Bible. He told me that this is not of God. And so from that very moment on, I sought freedom from this bondage to same-sex attraction. And I feasted on the Word of God. What I read finally fed the hungry void in my life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 became personal for me. If you walk by the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I started to realize that this same-sex desire was the desire of my flesh and I was under addiction to this desire of the flesh. And I started to realize that my spirit born of God has the same desire of God. But because the flesh and the spirit are contrary to each other, there's a war. And God helped me to overcome the desire for physical sex at the gay saunas every night. But that didn't mean that I had fully overcome the addiction to same-sex attraction. Some nights, the lust of the flesh was so strong, I'd succumb to masturbation I'd be so disappointed with myself. It was frustrating to come so far and yet stop short of complete victory. Two years passed, but still without victory. There were decisive moments when I trashed all the gay porn videos and all the baggage that reminded me of my previous self. But I was still struggling, clicking on the same gay porn sites, reactivating my cancer subscriptions, seeking new sources of junk to look at. I asked God, why? And God showed me in James chapter 3, look at the horses. You turn the bit and the horse will turn. And, but look also at the ships. 
Though they are large ships driven by fierce winds, it is steered by a small rudder. And God revealed to me, for some of us, breaking free from this condition is the experience of the horse. The horse, when you turn, the horse will turn immediately and the horse will turn completely. For the very large ship that's driven by fierce winds, resisted by fierce winds, when you turn the rudder on the ship, it is turning and it will turn and it will turn completely, but it won't turn immediately. And God told me this, my journey was the experience of the large ship. As long as I kept confessing the truth of the Word of God over me, that I've been delivered from the power of darkness, my ship is still turning. And that one day, my ship will completely turn. So I stayed in faith, confessing the truth of the Word of God over me, that I have been delivered from the power of darkness, even though I was still struggling and falling back into sin. He showed me in Numbers chapter 33, He said to the children of Israel, if you do not drive out the remnants, the last remnants of the inhabitants of this land, there will remain a scourge to your eyes, a thorn in your sight. And God spoke this to me. If I'm not prepared to let go of the last remnant of this desire for same-sex attraction, then it will remain a scourge to my eyes, a thorn in my sight for the rest of my life. And when I realized this, that night, the 6th of June, 2018, I said to God, I don't want any of this anymore. I want it all out. And when I said that to God, the power of God rushed into me, the grace of God rushed into me. And from that moment on, I knew, I knew that I knew, I have been completely, totally, and permanently set free from the bondage of same-sex attraction. I realized that freedom from same-sex attraction is not the suppression of the desire. It's not even the absence of the desire but it's the victory, the overcoming of that desire. So now, from time to time, I may still be tempted by guys, but just as all of us are tempted by random thoughts that come into our mind, I brush those thoughts away. I'm no longer under addiction to those temptations. I'm no longer unable to overcome those temptations. So friends, for those of you who are out there struggling to overcome, You may not see the light at the end of the tunnel, but don't give up. I was there with you. I was there for two and a half years. But the Word of God is true, even if you don't see it. Stand in faith on what the Word of God says, which is that Jesus has delivered us from the power of darkness. And just as God delivered me by His power, by His Spirit, by His grace, He too can deliver you from the grip of same-sex attraction.